What's so special about Stanley Church to you, Frank? Well, it's special to me because my ancestors were baptised here. Uh, they were married there. And most of them are buried in there. So it, it's something special to me. I can go back in, in for many, many years in my my great grandfather, of course, he is in Stanley Church, and my great grandmother. Uh, I have my mother and father there. I have brothers and sisters there. I have uncles and aunts there. My dear wife is there, and uh, hopefully, uh, I shall be laid to rest at some time in the future. And it was in the early part of 1920. And at that time, there were the Throats and Seamen at Newmarket. And J and J Charlesworth, they were the owners. And they were the Throats and Seamen, but they left a pillar of coal to support the church. And it was during this time that I started to take an interest in the subsidence in Stanley Church. And I was told that Stanley Church pillow in the Sultan Seam had been what we call robbed because coal had been taken out of the pillow and not been shown on the surveyor's plans. Now in later years, when the subsidence got worse, which is there to be seen, I decided to do some research into the extraction of coal in the church area. So I started off by doing research in the Eggmore seam work from the Shire's pit. And during that research, I sent to the National Coal Board and asked for plans showing Stanley Church and all the surface features and also the plans of all the coal that had been extracted, extracted in the church area uh, from the uh, Eggmore scene. And I found from these plans, and these plans are available, that the pillar of coal left to protect it was totally inadequate. They worked within approximately 15 yards of the church pillar and they drove roadways right through the middle of the pillar of coal. And that would be the beginning of strata disturbance in the church area. And then in later years then, They worked the soaks and seam in that area. And so I examined the plans from the soaks and seam. And of course, I, I also was in a position for to put the church in direct relationship to the underground workings. Because I had plans for to do this. And of course, these plans are in my own now. And I find out, much to my disgust, that by modern standards, the uh, pillar of coal in the Sultan Seam was not adequate for to give full support and give full protection to the structure of Stanley Church. And then I went into it a little bit deeper and I interviewed an ex undermanager of mine called Walter Taylor because I knew that he'd worked in this area as a young man. And he was a mining engineer. He had mining engineering qualifications. As a matter of fact, he was one of my older managers. And I have this in writing. I asked him if he would write me uh, a note about it. And so he wrote a note which suggested that he himself was witness to the fact the coal had been taken out of the church pillar in the Sultan Seam. And if that was so, and there was evidence to, to, to prove it, 
this will reduce the effect of the pillow to such an extent that it will cause strata disturbance in that area. And of course you can see that from the cracks in the church. And so I consulted some of my mining colleagues and asked their opinion about it. And after consultation, we were of the opinion that the pillar of coal had not been large enough to protect the church of Stanley. And of course, a pillar of coal is only adequate if it proves that it's done its job. Now, I appreciate, I've been managing pits now since I was 25 years of age, and I appreciate all the problems associated with the country management on subsidence. Because nobody so far has been able to draw up a definite formula for the size of a pillar to protect property. And the county manager can only do what he thinks is right. And of course the National Coal Board is aware of this too. So much so that over the years, through legislation, there has been legislation for to give people the right for to claim compensation if coal has disturbed property. And of course those, uh, that legislation still exists. But I do know that Stanley Church did make a claim against the National Coal Board. And I'm aware of the fact that the National Coal Board uh, turned their claim down. So far I've not seen any evidence from plans that gave them the right for to do so. And what annoys me so much about it is that the man, and I'm not saying this with any disrespect to him, but the man who signed the letter turning the application down wasn't even a qualified man engineer. So I feel rather sad about that. And I feel sad that uh, it's not being pursued as it should have been pursued by the church authorities. I, I think they ought to have pursued this. But this is my opinion. I, I have all the plans. I have shown these plans to the present uh, vicar. He's seen them, he, he's, so I'm not talking behind anybody's back, he, he, he knows that they exist. Uh, and uh, I was prepared, and I'm still prepared, to say my piece about it, if it's necessary for to do so. I don't think I can say much more about it, except in, in my opinion, there's been an injustice done as far as compensation uh, to Stanley Church from the National Coal Board as it was at that time.